Hi everyone, welcome to Smart Math Online Tutor. Through this video, we are going to look into scale diagrams. So let's get started by looking at what is a scale diagram. A rectilinear plane figure drawn such that every measurement of length is increased or decreased by the same ratio is called a scale diagram. And here is a scale diagram of a land. And then we are going to look into bearings. What is a bearing? It is a measurement that is used to indicate a direction in a horizontal plane. And definitely you should remember that there are three factors when writing a bearing. The first is the angle of a bearing is measured starting from the direction of north. And then it is measured in clockwise direction and the final thing is this angle must be represented in three digits or using three digits. So let's look into some examples. Look at this. Now with respect to O, P is at an angle of 72 degrees and then this direction of P from O we write as a bearing like this. The bearing of P from O is 72 degrees. So this is how we write 72. In front of 72 we put a 0 because this is a bearing we have to represent it with three digits. Now you have to carefully understand this is the bearing of P from O. That means you stand at O facing the direction of north and then you turn until you meet the direction of P. So you have to turn a degree of 72. Right now that is how we decide the bearing. Let's move on to the next one. Now in this case 53 degrees is marked. This 53 degrees is the bearing of B from A. The bearing of B from A is 53 degrees but since it is a bearing we have to put a 0 in front of 53. Now what if I ask you to find out the bearing of A from B? the bearing of A from B. That means now you are at B and you are going to find out the bearing of A from B. So to decide that first of all we have to find out this angle. What is this angle? We know it is 127. How did I say that it is 127? Now you know these two lines marking the north direction are parallel to one another. So 53 and 127 becomes allied angles. You know sum of allied angles is equal to 180. So 180 minus 53 will give you 127. So this angle is 127. Now this is not our answer. You should remember the bearing always starts from north in clockwise direction. This 127 is measured in anticlockwise direction. So to find out the bearing we have to measure the angle in clockwise direction like this. Now 360 minus 127 will give you 233 degrees and this 233 degrees is the bearing of A from B. Fine. Let's move on to another example. Look at this diagram. Now here the details are mentioned. There are three locations or three points named as A, B, C. What are we going to find? The bearing of B from A. The bearing of B from A. The location of B as seen from A is this angle. That is 10. So it is 10 degrees. But when you are writing the 10 degrees, you have to put a 0 in front because this is a bearing. And then... The bearing of C from B. The bearing of C from B. Now you are at B. Right? You are at B. And you are going to find where C is. For, for that, first of all, I have to draw the north like this. And then we have to take the angle there. You know it is 170 degrees because this side it is 10. As I said before, allied angles sum up to 180 degrees. So if this is 10 the balance or the the other allied angle here we can find by subtracting 10 from 180 so then it becomes 170 
then you know this angle is known that is 90 this is 170 so you can find the angle the remaining angle by subtracting the known values from 360 so once subtracted you will get the answer as 100 degrees so 100 degrees is the bearing of c from b fine the next is the bearing of a from b the bearing of a from b from b if you turn towards a in clockwise direction where will be the location of a or what will be the direction of a so you know this um, we found the 100 degrees there and you have to turn a little more now uh, this is the angle of uh, b angle of a from b so you know 100 plus 90 that is 190 degrees the last part the bearing of b from c the bearing of b from c now we are going to measure the angle from c therefore first of all we have to draw the north direction at c and then let's find out the angle you know this is 80 degrees because there are 100 plus 80 makes 180 but this is not the answer we have to start from c in clockwise direction and that clockwise direction the angle is 360 minus 80 that is 280 degrees so the bearing of b from c is 280 degrees let's move on to the next example the example tells us a captain of a ship which is scheduled to sail from Trincomalee to a certain harbour has been instructed to sail 100 kilometers on a bearing of 30 degrees and another 100 kilometers on a bearing of 80 degrees. So they tell us to represent this information in a rough sketch and write a description on the route he must follow back to Trincomalee. So let's get started. Let me mark T as for Trincomalee and then to mark the directions, first of all, I should mark the north and it tells the ship sails 100 kilometers at a bearing of 30 degrees so let me mark 30 degrees and 100 kilometers the data will be like this now at this point i mark this point as p from p it should move another 100 kilometers at a bearing of 80 degrees so to mark the bearing there again i mark the direction of north and then i mark 80 degrees and 100 kilometers like this fine now this is the sketch we need the final destination let me mark as c now from trincomalee the ship has reached the point c now they tell us to describe the route he must follow back to trincomalee that means from c to t if he is coming in the same path how will you describe this path just like the question in the question they have given how the ship has sailed from Trincomalee to this point C. Just like that, we have to write down a description how the ship will reverse, come back from C to T. So, for that, first of all, I mark the north at C. Now, before finding the bearing of P from C, I have to find out the remaining angle there. So, you know, just before I said about allied angles so when one angle is 80 degrees you must understand the next angle will be 100 degrees to make it 180 now we can find out the bearing of p from c very simply that will be this angle you can find it out by subtracting 100 from 360 degrees so that gives you 260 degrees this 260 degrees is the bearing of p from c right now the ship has to come 100 kilometers at a bearing of 260 degrees and then the ship will reach the point p what must the ship do from p now to find out the angles at p first of all you have to find out this angle that is 150 degrees because 30 plus 150 will sum up to 180 and the remaining angle at that point 150 80 and the remaining angle will be 130 because angle around a point sum up to 360 degrees 
Fine. Now we are going to find out the bearing of T from P. That is this angle. So what should you do? Very simple. You have to add 80 and 130. That will give you 210 degrees. So let's write down the description. From C, sail 100 kilometers on a bearing of 260 degrees and another 100 kilometers on a bearing of 210 degrees to reach Trincomalee. So this must be your description. Fine. Now let's move on to the next section, drawing scale diagrams. How to draw scale diagrams? You should remember to draw a scale diagram, you have to follow very few simple steps. Let's see what are these steps. The first is to draw a sketch. Before drawing the scale diagram, it is very important to draw a rough sketch so that you understand what type of an image or what type of a diagram you will be getting. So that will help you to manage your paper to draw the scale diagram. Otherwise, without drawing a sketch, if you directly draw, draw the scale diagram, you will start at a point and sometimes that page will not be manageable thereafter then from the beginning you will have to draw so a very important step in drawing scale diagrams is to draw a sketch and the next step is to look at the measurements and decide a suitable scale by looking at the measurements given in the description you have to decide the scale and then draw the scale diagram with relevant measurements you have to use the straight edge or the ruler and then the protractor and it's very important to use a sharp pencil as well to draw the scale diagram. Fine. And then last step is to write down the scale used in your scale diagram. It is very important to write down the scale that you used in your scale diagram. Otherwise, you will lose marks for not writing the scale of the scale diagram. Now, let's try this practically using an example. The vertices of a triangular flow area are A, B and C. The positions of the vertices with respect to a point P are as below. A is located 30 meters away on a bearing of 0 degrees. This is a special case, 0 degrees. I will explain it in the explanation part. And B is located 40 meters away on a bearing of 120 degrees. And C is located 35 meters away on a bearing of 220 degrees. So what should we do? We have to draw a scale diagram representing the above information. Now, what is our first step? We have to draw a sketch. Now, all these details are given with respect to a point P. So I put a point P and then I mark the direction of north like this. Now, A is at a point of 30 meters away from P and it is at a bearing of 0 degrees. Now, 0 degrees means from the north to A, the point A, the angle is 0. That means the point A lies on this line or the direction of north. So, I mark a point like this and mark A there and then I mark the length as 30 meters. Fine. This is the position of A. And then they tell B is located 40 meters away on a bearing of 120. Now to that, I draw a line. I mark the angle as 120. And here is B. This is a sketch. So this is the sketch of this uh, information. B is at an angle of 120. And then they are telling about C. It is located I have to mark the direction as well. Now, C is located 35 meters away on a bearing of 220 degrees. Now, this 220 degrees is from north. Already 120 I have marked. So, 220 minus 120 will be 100. That remaining 100 degrees, I mark it like this. That is the point C and the distance is 35 meters. So, this is our sketch. Now, we are going to draw the scale diagram on this sketch. Now, let's get started. Right? To decide the scale, now you can see the lengths here, 30 meters, 40 meters and 35 meters. So, I take 10 meters will be represented by 2 centimeters in my scale diagram. So, then if 10 meters are represented by 2 centimeters, 
30 meters will be represented by 6 centimeters. Then 40 meters will be represented by 8 centimeters. And 35 meters will be represented by 7 centimeters. Now, according to this, how to decide the scale? I told you 2 centimeters are representing 10 meters. You know, 10 meters is equal to 1000 centimeters. 10 into 100 is 1000. So, 2 centimeters represent 1000 centimeters. Units are same in both the cases. Now, then I can write down the ratio scale is equal to 2 is to 1000. This 2 is to 1000 means 2 centimeters represent 1000 centimeters. You can simplify the ratio and write down the simplest ratio as the scale. That is 1 is to 500. Fine. Now, let's start drawing the scale diagram. First of all, mark a point P. Right. Now, you know A is at a 30, at a distance of 30 meters from the point P. 30 meters is represented by 6 centimeters. So, I draw a line of 6 centimeters like this. Right. Now, this is the point of A. Fine. And then we are going to decide where B is. For that, I use the protractor. I keep the protractor like this. And then I use my ruler and draw a line of length. We have to decide B that is at 40 meters. 40 meters is represented by 8 centimeters along 120 degrees like this. Now, in the protractor, it is 120 degrees. In my ruler, it is 8 centimeters. So, this is the position of B. Right. Then we are going to decide where C is. To find out C, I place my protractor like this and then I keep my ruler along 100 degrees and draw a line of length 7 centimeters because 35, centim 35 meters is represented by 7 centimeters in my scale diagram. Now, this is the position of C. Now, we have found the three positions of the vertices of the triangle. Now, what we have to do is to join the vertices like this. So, this is the scale diagram of the question given. Hope I made myself clear about how to draw and work out regarding bearings and at the same time about scale drawings. See you with another Smart Math Tip. Until then, goodbye.